I'm gonna show you guys the healthiest plant foods that most people have access to, starting with seaweed. And the reason we're starting with seaweed is because I truly believe it's the healthiest plant food we can consume. The reason I consume seaweed is because it's incredibly high in potassium as well as iodine. And although I'm on a carnivore diet, I will occasionally use this, you know, when I don't have seafood for a little while. It's also incredibly high in the other minerals and it has plenty of vitamins as well. I really think anyone who's on a plant-based diet not consuming seaweed missed a memo, so to speak. Uh, if you guys want to check this out, I get it from Main Coast Sea Vegetables. I do have uh, some of that on my Amazon shop. They also sell this at Whole Foods, I believe. And in regards to the differences between the seaweeds, they actually have a comparison on their website. Uh, from my memory, kelp and sea lettuce are the best in regards to overall mineral amounts. And then there was maybe one that had slightly more magnesium. But uh, for the most part, excellent source of potassium, excellent source of iodine. That would be its primary purpose on like a keto or a carnivore diet. Uh, the next food that we could talk about is coconut, and uh, coconut comes in a variety of forms. Now, this is raw, this is pasteurized coconut milk. Obviously, I mean, I even have, I even have, you know, raw coconut oil here. And, you know, although they don't have a place in my diet, it's an excellent source of fat and calories and nutrition. When we talk about nutrition from an indigenous standpoint, we also mean calories because these people had to survive. They needed to find a source of calories for sustenance and coconut can be that source of sustenance. Now, in a lot of cases, stuff like raw coconut butter and the raw coconut products are a bit more expensive, especially cream. I know there's a website that sells like raw coconut cream for very, very expensive prices and fresh raw coconut is very hard to process itself. But I mean, there's coconut aminos too. There's a variety of coconut products that I think people wouldn't have any problem including in their diet, unless you're allergic like me. Next food is raw honey. And although raw honey isn't necessarily a health food, I think it's the best way to sweeten something and add slight palatability. You could literally use like a tablespoon of raw honey in like a pastured, grass-fed, raw ice cream recipe, and it would literally be enough to sweeten the whole thing. If you put just a tiny bit of this on some beef fat or some even foie gras, it increases the palatability so much and makes it so much more enjoyable. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's beneficial for your health. Uh, it does have antimicrobial properties and uh, the raw form definitely has more beneficial enzymes and is easier on the liver as well as digestive system. But again, definitely something that should be limited and I mean really to me is the only option for sweetening anything. Uh, the next food is macadamia nuts. My family uses macadamia nut oil for a lot of cooking. It has a fairly high smoke point and very good omega ratios. The one very interesting thing about macadamia nuts and the reason I'm including them in this video is because most nuts have very high phytic acid, anti-nutrient content. Macadamia nuts actually have very, very low levels of phytic acid, if anything, in insignificant amounts that you shouldn't really worry about. So compared to walnuts, almonds, cashews, any other nut, macadamia nuts blow them out of the water, not only for being low in phytic acid, but it also has the best fatty acid ratios. The omega-6 are incredibly low in comparison to other nuts and the monounsaturated fat is higher as well. So macadamia nuts, definitely the healthiest nut to my understanding. Avocado, and I was not originally going to include avocados in this video, but since I had one, uh, you know, it's a good source of fat, has a decent amount of some vitamins, I believe, a small amount of vitamin K and a small amount of vitamin E. Uh, nothing to really write home about, but out of all the plant-based foods, Avocado is really the only source of decent fats, nutrition, at, well, at least some sort of nutrition. Blueberries, and uh, here are some wild blueberries, uh, frozen from Whole Foods. But blueberries for me are a food that uh, you can enjoy that's not too inflammatory, and although I wouldn't necessarily start speaking so many positive things about the antioxidant 
properties of blueberries. It's definitely something that can be used to add enjoyment to your diet and something that I wouldn't necessarily say is harmful. And this kind of applies to all high quality seasonal fruits and berries and fruits that have not really been modified by like modern farming that are much higher sugar, much higher yielding in carbohydrates. It's, you know, none of these foods in particular outside of the seaweed would really be consumed for some sort of vitamin or mineral benefit. Uh, it's just something that you can include in your diet for either caloric needs or like enjoyment needs. Uh, the last food we're gonna touch on is the sweet potato. And I really love sweet potatoes. I used to be a bodybuilder. I used to eat so many of these. And here I actually have uh, five different types of sweet potato that Whole Foods usually carries. And let me know if you guys want me to do like a comparison video on the taste of these. I don't really know how well that would go with my channel and I could I could just tell you guys off the top of my head to be honest because I've had these in the past but uh, sweet potatoes to me are a delicious and caloric dense calorically dense plant food that is pretty much accessible to almost everyone unfortunately they are a little high in oxalates and I can't digest these like if I eat these they come out the other end the same way so uh, depending on how well you digest potatoes, this might not be for you, but they're definitely a great vessel for consuming fat. Like if you mix a lot of tallow or lard into a bunch of mashed sweet potatoes, it's definitely a palatable way to add fat to your diet. So uh, these are kind of all the, the plant foods that I really had like off the top of my head that I was thinking about covering. And uh, of course, guys, there's plenty of other plant foods that have a variety of pros and cons but for the most part there are fairly few negative aspects to these plant foods barring any allergies uh, if you guys would like to see more videos like this please let me know if you guys want to support me just share the video uh, i do have the amazon shop up and if you guys want to reach out to me for consulting in regards to diet fitness health whatever getting your vitamin d3 levels up to normal shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com or contact me through my website. That's down in the description below. If you guys haven't subscribed, please do. And I am on Twitter and Instagram as well. If you want to see me either post silly pictures or argue with other carnivores on Twitter.